In this video, dissection of the suboccipital triangle will be demonstrated. This work was produced by Dr. Carlos Andres suarez -Kian and Dr. Joel Valensky. Dr. suarez -Kian is the narrator of this video. The suboccipital region contains small muscles that provide balance for the head and more deeply contains some of the articulations between the axis and atlas and the skull. Let's start the dissection of the suboccipital region. The suboccipital region is a small area that contains structures that connect the back of the head to the vertebral column. In order to reach the structures within this area, we need to reflect some of the superficial back muscles, specifically the trapezius, the semispinalis capitis, and the splenius capitis and cervices. As one continues with the dissection, the greater occipital nerve is revealed. The greater occipital nerve is the dorsal ramus of the second cervical spinal nerve. It pierces the trapezius and semispinalis capitis muscles to innervate the skin of the back of the scalp. Although the nerve can be found superficial to the trapezius, the dense fibrous tissue of the ligamentum nuque often makes it difficult for students to identify the nerve in this tissue. However, once the trapezius is reflected, the nerve is easily seen piercing the semispinalis capitis. The greater occipital nerve is associated with a pain syndrome called occipital neuralgia in which patients have severe pain in their scalp due to inflammation of the nerve. We now reflect the semispinalis capitis to show the greater occipital nerve emanating from above the axis. Remember that in the cervical region, the spinal nerves emanate from the vertebral column above the vertebra with the same number. Thus, the greater occipital nerve which remembers the dorsal ramus of the C2 spinal nerve, exits the spinal column above the axis, which is the second cervical vertebrae. Some of the suboccipital muscles are seen here, but they're better seen after a thorough cleaning of the area, as revealed in the next image. The suboccipital area has now been dissected. Let's get oriented before we identify the muscles. Focus your attention on the occipital bone of the skull, the posterior tubercle of the atlas, and the spinous process of the axis. We now can identify the muscles. The four suboccipital muscles include the rectus capitis posterior, major and minor, and the oblicus capitis superior, and inferior. They clearly are well suited to provide balancing torques to the atlas and skull. Now, the important relationship of the greater occipital nerve as it turns superiorly, just inferior to the oblicus capitis inferior, is noted. If the nerve was originally damaged while trying to clean the tough superficial fascia and ligament and nuque, it will generally be found at this location by continuing to dissect and searching for the nerve. Of clinical relevance, the rectus capitis posterior minor inserts partially onto the dorsal sac of the spinal cord and has been suggested to be the source of pain in some dorsal tension headaches. Also shown in this image is the occipital artery which is a branch of the external carotid artery that supplies the back of the scalp with blood. Looking at the suboccipital region in a different cadaver, we again become oriented and determine the location of the rectus capitis posterior major and minor, the posterior tubercle of the atlas, and the spinous process of the axis. In addition, we note the relationship of the greater occipital nerve to the obliquitus capitis inferior and the presence of the occipital artery. But now, we also focus our attention 
on the suboccipital nerve, which is the dorsal ramus of the first cervical nerve and which innervates all of the suboccipital muscles. The vertebral artery is also visible here as it leads the vertebral column to enter the skull and help supply the brain with blood. And finally, we can again label the obliquus capitis superior and its attachment to the transverse process of the atlas to finish forming the suboccipital triangle. Hence, the answer to the question, what is found in the suboccipital triangle, includes the vertebral artery and the suboccipital nerve. And of course, the suboccipital venous plexus, but this is hard to show in a cadaveric dissection. Further dissection in this region allows us to examine the craniovertebral articulation. To do this, we must remove all of the suboccipital muscles and then identify the posterior arch of the atlas, which we then also remove as shown here. Once the posterior arch of the atlas is removed, we can see the tectorial membrane which is simply the continuation of the posterior longitudinal ligament into the skull. Incision of the tectorial membrane reveals the thick transverse ligament of the atlas, which acts to keep the dense process congruent with the anterior arch of the atlas. Dislocation of this joint can occur due to traumatic or degenerative conditions and can result in quadriplegia. Children with Down syndrome are particularly prone to dislocation of this joint. Removal of the transverse ligament allows us to see the alar ligaments, which connect the dens to the occipital bone and act as check ligaments to prevent excess rotary movement of the skull. This now concludes the dissection of the occipital triangle.